Duquesne and the stage is set in Winnipeg for a West final rematch between the Lions and Bombers. And for early November in Winnipeg, pretty nice, nice night here as we get set. BC coming off an impressive victory against Calgary to get here. Winnipeg 14 and 4, looking to book another trip back with their veteran quarterback at the helm. Yeah, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were once again the best team in the West Division, led by the most playoff battle tested quarterback in the Canadian Football League right now. Zach Kolaros, 4 0 in the playoffs as a starter for the Bombers. Oh, Vernon Adams Jr. put on a passing clinic last week in the semifinal versus Calgary, throwing for a franchise playoff record over. 400 yards. Can he do it again in the encore here tonight? Rick Campbell having a tremendous season with the BC Lions. Strong down the stretch and looked great last week with Vernon Adams on fire. Three and one in divisional games in his career. One loss against that man right there, Mike O'Shea. Three straight West Finals. Finished first in the West. Again, three years in a row. Montreal awaits the winner. Enough waiting here in Winnipeg. Let's kick it off. The big boys ready to rumble. Bombers and Lions at IG Field. Williams watches it bounce at the 25. Bounces right into the hands, actually, of Mackey, who was there. And a surprise return for Mackey as that bounces up. And there's a look at Vernon Adams. 15-7 with the BC Lions. His first playoff win as a Canadian Football League starter was last week in the semifinal versus the Calgary Stampeders. As I mentioned, over 400 yards passing a Lions franchise record. That was a heads-up play by David Mackey. That was a live ball on a kickoff. And it was bouncing around. David Mackey picking that up gave the Lions their first possession. They start from their own 38. Adams quickly. And that is batted down. Willie Jefferson getting in front of it. Let's take a look at this BC offense. Jarrell Broxton, left tackle, Kent Perkins. Here's your assignment. You got to try and control the top two bookends in the league that combined for 19 sacks, six fat force fumbles, and 16 knockdowns. There's another knockdown by Willie Jefferson. Keon Hatcher, almost 200 yards in the semifinal versus Calgary. No! Six best in CFL playoff history. Three to the left, three to the right for Adams. In the pocket. Gets it away, drops it in there over the head of Hollins. There's a flag on the play, though. As Hollins immediately was calling for that yellow flag to be thrown. Let's get a look at it. Pass interference. Winnipeg number one. Spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. Diedrich Nichols gets called in the first one. We got a great ISO look at it here. Here's Hollins with his dig route, and then he's going to bang back outside. A little grab from the jersey from Diedrich Nichols. First flag of the game favors the Lions. Crowded IG field, bringing it here early. Winnipeg just win no! loss at home this year. And who was it? Of course, the BC Lions. <laughs> They'll hand it off to Mizell. Look at this hole. First down and more. All the way down to the 35 in a run game that has not done much this season. Strikes for 27 here early in the first. Yeah, great cut by Mizell. They don't run the ball a lot. At least they haven't in the back half of the regular season. Not a lot of run in the semifinal game, but a nice cut to the outside as saw Kent Perkins get out on Big Hill, the middle linebacker. And this play by Jackson Jeffco, he goes right to quarterback VA, who did it, some damage running in the semi. Puts the hit on the quarterback. Now they'll mix it up, drop it back Throw to Vernon it. Adams. He's going to be pressured and take it down. The trickery won't work this time. Adams gobble up. Triple reverse throws try from Jordan. Max Simic, but it's well covered. The veteran bomber secondary are back there in coverage. Keon Hatcher, there's a reverse look from Hollins. There's Hatcher. He's double teamed. The only other choice is up at the top. That's Katoy, also double teamed. Can't fool this veteran defense on that one. A loss of eight yards. Sets up second and long. The first possession of the ball game for the Lions, who won the coin toss, took the ball. Flags here. 
And that'll be blown dead before Adams can get the ball away. Let's back him up a little bit more. Procedure, BC number 59, five yard penalty, remains second down. You gotta put that one on the crowd. They came to work, didn't they? Yeah. They, they're here to be the extra man, and Kent Perkins didn't hear the snap count, went a little early. That penalty, though, that extra five takes him out of field goal range. Second, and a long 23. Three-man front, Adams, a ton of time, far side, has a completion into the hands of Justin McKinnis, wrapped up immediately by Dietrich Nichols. Boy, you're right on the bubble if you're Rick Campbell here to think about a field goal. Sean White has been off the charts, great CFL All-Star as your field goal kicker. This would be a long one. His long on the re in the regular season, 51 yards. And watch out for Janarian Grant back there if he doesn't get it. John White from 48 to open the scoring. Just inside the right hash. That is up. And it is just enough. Sneaks it in over the bar. And BC strikes first. John White is fired up. They lead 3-0 on the road. We know where Winnipeg wants to get to, but here's how they got here. Here's their road to the West Final. Well, third straight season finishing first in the West Division. Another 14 and four record for Michael O'Shea's group. And two of the three games versus the BC Lions they won, including that overtime win, which basically locked up first Freeze, place for the here. Bombers. Kolaris, after Freeze. the Sean White field goal, will start on the 40. Brady Oliveira right up the middle. He's got a first down and more. There is your West most outstanding player. 15 yards to start the game with a bang. Big block up front from Chris Kolonkowski. He's the center who's going to get the first big block on the down block to Josh Woods, who's playing for Ben Halak. More in the starting lineups in a second. But you get your center on the middle linebacker. That gives your running back that open hole right at the line of scrimmage, and he's in the secondary. Over 100 yards in last year's West Final. Right here, Good right start here, right here, right here for Brady Oliveira. Go! What is what is that? Three options out to the left for Kolaris. He's going to look that way. Over the middle, deflected and falls incomplete. Trying to drop one in there to Rasheed Bailey, but it's batted away. Nice play by Ryder Varga dropping back as a rotational linebacker. University of Regina product getting his hand on that first throw from Zach Kolaris. 4-0 in the playoffs for the Bombers. Second in the league in passing yards behind VA. We got one and two in this West Final tonight. Could be a little bit of an air show. Who knows? We'll see. Second and ten. Midfield. Draw to Oliveira. Looking for a first down. Stumbling ahead. He should have it. Excellent final effort there from Brady Oliveira. Well, no one should be surprised that the Bombers are going to try and feed Brady Oliveira over 1,500 yards rushing on a season. That was first in the Canadian Football League, and it wasn't close. A finalist for MOP, a finalist for Outstanding Canadian. 31 base, X shave, Y far, Over 2,000. Yards of offense from Brady Oliveira this season. He'll stand in behind Zach Kolaris. Back into the belly of Brady, pushing ahead again. Look at this. That's another Winnipeg first down. Kick out block here. The offensive left side, defensive right side as they hit that hole. And again, just 
huge valley there where the DBs and the safety and Adrian Green is going yikes is this going to be a long game if I have to tackle number 20 all night long three carries for 35 yards to start this game Winnipeg's not even hiding it six offensive linemen out there for Kolaris Go! What is? What is that? Oliveira trying to kick it to the right this time, runs into some traffic, and is wrapped up. Big part of this Bombers offense. Well, Brady Oliveira will tell you up front of the reason for the 1,500 yards with two all-stars in the CFL and Patrick Newfeld and Jamarcus Hardrick on that right side. Of course, it's a veteran group up front. It was a game day decision. In fact, just about a half hour ago for Nick Dembski. He is good to go. The thousand yard receiver from University of Manitoba. And we're talking already about Brady Oliveira in his outstanding season. Second and six. Kenny Lawler versus Gary Peters at the top of your screen. Kolaris goes over the middle, has a completion. Right into the hands of Brady Oliveira again, this time through the air for 11. Comes out of the backfield, and he takes pride in this part of his game and runs a really nice route going one-on-one -on -one with Josh Woods. He lines up in sort of that third receiver slot position, and then you can see the dig across the face of Josh Woods for his first catch of the game. In that huge game back in week 18 he had eight catches was thrown the ball eight times caught them all and was part of a huge huge game first and ten seventh play of the drive what is that Kolaris Oliveira again gets to that second level down to the 15 against his BC Lions defense Matthew Betts number one in the league in sacks 18 on the season set a Canadian mark Sione Tehema back in. Bola Combo will play out at the will. Josh Woods plays for Ben Halatic at middle linebacker. He was hurt in the semifinal. And there's your two CFL All-Stars in the secondary, Gary Peters and TJ Lee. Might have to get involved that group back there in run stopping in a bigger way. I was gonna say, how do you slow this this guy down? Well, right? you gotta run blitz, which means bring your DBs and linebackers up to the line of scrimmage and try and cancel the gaps. Second and five, Oliveira slides over to the right of his quarterback. They'll give it to him up the middle, pushing ahead. Look at this, down inside the 10, Brady Oliveira and various members of his offensive line carrying that ball inside the 10. That's basically what this was. This was just move the pile. Get low, get physical, great balance by Oliveira, and then the entire pile, the old line just driving it like pushing those sleds in training camp. ZX, one lead, Z Rocket, fullback 62 stick. yards of offense on this drive for Winnipeg. All of it to Brady Oliveira. Watch him go play action here. First and goal from the eight. Oh, back to Oliveira again. This time he's wrapped up and taken down by Lacombo. Yeah, there's the there's the blitz I'm talking about. That's Bo Lacombo from the linebacking core. Now he's got to get involved before the snap. Get up and take that gap. There's a gap on the defense right there. He's got to go up, take the gap, step up into the line. Now what does that open? Play action and the throw right behind him. Zach Kolaris, 15. Touchdown passes and a play action this season. Best in the league, and it wasn't even close. Second and goal from the hey, BC8. Tenth play of the drive. What is, what is that? that was a run. Back to Oliveira. Brady Oliveira trying to pick his way down towards the end zone and push towards the end zone. What an effort from Winnipeg. Big boys a road grading up front. Oliveira on that second audible from Zach Kolaris at the line of scrimmage calling the second basically a draw 
delayed run play, but look at the push and the shoving and the grinding to get into that end zone, that final two yards. There's some heavy lifting going on from the big boys up front. It looked like he kind of got pushed back to about the four. And then it was just like, no, nope, not today. And the push through, incredible stuff. Brady Oliveira all over that first drive. Castillo knocks one home. Brady Oliveira, a 10 play 70 yard drive. He had all 70 yards and a touchdown. Welcome back to Winnipeg, and if you wanted to look at a recipe for success for the Bombers, I think we just got it, Glenn. You're right. Nine touches, 70 yards, all for number 20, and assist goes to the offensive line that are road grading right now. And getting Brady Oliveira to the second level, and when they don't get him to the second level, they take the pile three, four, five yards. He's eating. He's hungry. Looking great. Chance for BC to possibly respond. Williams takes it on a bounce at the 30, picks his way through, finds a little bit of space, and a nice return just shy of the 50. Well deserved break for that man after a great start. Welcome back to the Brady Oliveira show on TSN. I feel sorry for that bike. <laughs> Hammers that bike as hard as he just took it to the BC Lions defense. It could be a long night, a beautiful night at IG Field. Crowd here just will not stop. Vernon Adams starts on his own 48 after a nice return from Terry Williams. Three-man pressure. Adams with time, now in trouble, takes off to his left, down the field, almost intercepted. Kyrie Wilson got turned around and couldn't get a hand on it. That's the second time already tonight that Willie Jefferson uh -oh. has got his hand on the ball, and that's not good news for the Lions. Looked like Keon Hatcher was hurt on the play. Here's, here's another knockdown second in the second series. Willie Jefferson who just has a knack for getting his hands up at the right time but most importantly for Lions fans Keon Hatcher lipped off he had a monster game in that Calgary semifinal lucky Whitehead into the game in the slot now Adams with time looks over the middle and that'll go for a first down and it is lucky whitehead who didn't see the field last week accepted the role as depth of receiver and now gets called into work yeah he didn't he didn't get a target didn't get to play offensively justin mckinnis has taken over for him as a starter in that position but now with hatcher out lucky whitehead is in there huge Good catch for whitehead now they'll hand it off to mizell big hill Jeff Coder there, short pickup of about three yards against his Winnipeg defense. CFL All-Star Willie Jefferson off the edge again, two knockdowns. He led the league in that category this season. The leader of this team is one of them anyway. It was, of course, Adam Big Hill led the team in tackles again. And no one had more interceptions than Demario Houston in the regular season. He had seven. Second and seven. Empty backfield for VA. Three options to the left, three to the right. Flag as he throws over the middle, and that is dropped by his running back, Mizell. But as we mentioned, a flag on the play. Let's see what this flag is. Looks like it's going against the Lions. Offside, BC number 19. The penalty is declined. Third down. Dominique Grimes. Offside on the play. Let's take a look at what happened to Keon Hatcher. He's up here at the top of your screen. That number three receiver to the field. And he just off the get-go, the get-off right at the line of scrimmage, just blew a tire. 
Into the tent. As we speak for Hatcher. High snap. Clintock got it. Brought it down. Gets it away. That'll bounce at the five. Grant will take it right there. And he'll be forced out of bounds before he can get back to the ten. Well, the crowd, it's rocking here. How did the BC Lions prepare? Claire will have more when we return. Well, how are you supposed to get ready to play against these fans at IG Field? For more on what Rick Campbell did, let's send it down to Claire Hatch. Yeah, and the crowd's already been a factor in this game of the BC offense. And when BC lost that West final last year, Keon Hatcher told me he had two thoughts in his mind. One, we are going to be back in this game. And two, we're going to be more prepared. He said last year, what shocked him the most is he couldn't hear his sub think that IG Field was so loud. And he said on their final drive of the game, when they get into the huddle, call the plays, well, they wasted so much time trying to communicate. So this week, Rick Campbell, instead of practicing outdoors in an environment which would mimic the weather. He said it was more valuable to go inside BC Place, put the sound system blaring crowd noise so they couldn't communicate. Vernon Adams said they worked really hard on their hand signals, and Rick Campbell told me he thinks that they are going to be more resilient and prepared because of it. Well, on top of that, the weather here is okay, so you didn't really need to worry about practicing in the wind. By okay, I mean, what's it, two degrees at kickoff, so it could be much, much worse. You know the crowd's always going to bring it, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely, especially when Vernon Adams is out there and they've Go. already had what one is? procedure call. What is that? Back to Brady Oliveira, pushing it ahead, takes it outside the 15, and once again, six more in a second and manageable. Mentioned Ben Halata cut of the lineup, their middle linebacker all season long. Josh Woods had a monster game in the semi, led all tacklers on both teams with 11 in that playoff game, and he has to find his way through all those blocking offensive linemen to make the tackle there on Brady Olibera. There's Halatic, not dressed for this one, but here to bring some leadership from the sideline. Second and four, and Prukop into the game on a second and four at the Winnipeg 16. And he will keep it a flag as he turns it up the field, gets to the 20, that's about what they needed. But we'll see what this call is. Offside, BC number 20, five yard penalty. That's Lacombo. Hit with the offside. Well, Lacombo's rolled in, been sort of a rotational player defensively since coming back from injury, so he shouldn't be. He's got lots of reps this year. He and Josh Woods, though, playing different positions in this one than they did the last couple of weeks of the regular season and in the playoff game. 75 tackles. Three sacks and an interception for Lacombo this year as we tick down inside a minute the first quarter. Polaris this time gets it out to Dembski. Dembski's got his first catch of the game, and that's going to go for a first down for Winnipeg as the offense fires on all cylinders. Well, when 20 is occupying your mind defensively in Brady Oliveira, then he is number one priority. So what does Zach do here? He fakes it to Oliver up in the middle and then shoots it out there to Dembski quickly. And his ankle looks pretty good in that run. TJ Lee, I believe, is down on the field. And they're taking a look at him. Those are the first offensive yards by a bomber not named Brady Oliveira. And it is TJ Lee. They're looking at his foot. So a tough start injury-wise here for the BC Lions. Keon Hatcher taken to the tent with essentially a non-contact injury. And now TJ Lee down on the field. He was involved, I believe, on the tackling of Dembski. Another one in the tent for Rick Campbell's group. TJ Lee, as I mentioned, CFL All-Star this year. He led all defensive backs in defensive tackles this season. The leaders in that category are often linebackers, and they were against this year. But as far as the DBs go, he was number one, one of the great tacklers in helping in the run game. And that's a 
Massive injury here for the Lions to have to try and overcome because he's so good in run support. Congratulations to the Montreal Alouettes who booked a ticket to the big one. Oh yeah. Earlier on today in impressive fashion too against the 16 win Argo squad. Well, oh, that's not a good sign there. Yeah, congratulations to Montreal and thinking of the way they started and ownership group taking some time to get going and set up and they were behind the eight ball in free agency and a lot of things and Danny Machocha built a team put together a great roster added Darnell Sankey and Sean Lemon congratulations and Cody Fajardo I'm happy for him. motivated quarterback gets to the show former Alouette D line coach John Bowman actually carrying TJ Lee off the field while we were talking about the Montreal Alouettes Kolaris first and ten from the Winnipeg 40 Back to Brady Oliveira, finds a little bit of space, first down and more. All the way up to midfield, get 15 more. And a statement first quarter from the Bombers. This just in, they're going to run the ball in the West Final. Brady Oliveira, right down the throat of the BC Lions defense. Winnipeg on top, 7-3 through 15 minutes. Welcome back to IG Field. Bombers leading the Lions 7-3. to I don't think you need to be a football expert <laughs> to understand the strategy here for Winnipeg. No, no, you don't. I mean, 70 yards offense from Brady Oliveira alone, and basically it breaks down to this. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are going to run the ball. They're going to go to their MOP candidate, their MOP finalist in Oliveira. And the question is, can the BC Lions make enough adjustments and be strong enough up front to stop that run? Have to generate something offensively as well. BC against this Winnipeg defense. Not always easier said than done. And Winnipeg, the offense with the ball again. Oliveira, 80 on the ground, 11 through the air. Go! What is What is that? Kolaris looking to pass this time. Has Kenny Lawler. Lawler wrapped up immediately by Gary Peters. But he got about 10 yards. Let's get an injury update from Claire Hanna. Yeah, guys, right now, Keon Hatcher is questionable to return. They don't want to rule him out, but he has spent the last five minutes being seen in the tent. And then defenseman TJ Lee, he was sitting on the sidelines. He's still being seen. He tried to stand up, put some weight on that right ankle, but then sat back down. He's still being seen, so no word yet on his status, guys. Well, no shown for Winnipeg, and now likely no Hatcher the rest of the way for BC. Brukov into the game, short yardage, straight ahead. He's got another Winnipeg first down. Let's take a look at the injury story developing here for the BC Lions. Well, here's first Keon Hatcher, number four, right in the middle of your screen there. He's coming across the formation. And you can see that just no contact at all, just goes down. There's TJ Lee. Coming up on the run support like he's done so well all season long and somehow just as he goes down something ooh, again two almost innocent looking plays that didn't look like anything really happened there either. Hatcher has been money in playoff games so far in his career. Oliveira. the 30 as he creeps towards 100 yards rushing already in this football game. Chris Kolonkowski, the center, he's he's creating some big holes up front. There's the center, the second arrow, along with Patrick Newfelt to the right side of the formation. Newfelt and Kolonkowski on the double team. They're cutting off that first pursuit angle. And Oliveira is getting whether it's A, B, or C gap, he's making it happen. All the gaps. All the gaps matter. are open. It doesn't matter. BC hoping that? to find an answer. Kolaros fakes it this time. Out to his right. Now he's in trouble. He's taken down. Sione Tehema gets there for the first.
first time today. Boy, did the Lions need that one. Well, it's good work by Tiama, too. He missed the semifinal because he was taking care of a suspension that he got in the final game of the regular season, but he goes past the first blocker, beats Nick Dembski around the edge, and gets to Zach Kolaris. That passing down now in that passing play plays to the hands of the BC Lion defensive line. It's what they were real good at, getting after the passer. Seven sacks during the regular season for Tehema. A loss of 11 on this one. Second and 21. Go. For the Winnipeg what offense. What is it? Kolaris in the pocket. He's going to take a shot deep down the field to the end zone. Almost called in. That would have been remarkable. Kenny Lawler, as he was down, couldn't make a play on it. Bagio goes in for TJ Lee. He was in coverage, and Adrian Green, the safety, was trying to help out from inside out. They got all tangled up. Now, Lawler did a little bit of grabbing on his own, but this is, I think, what the fans are talking about, that like he got tripped at the ball, was about to arrive, but they were just falling all over the place. And it goes off his shoulder pad. Castillo called into duty from the 46-yard line. And he pushes it wide right, bounces to Williams. And he will be taken down in the end zone. Kenny Lawler doing his best to try to come back and get this football. Not able to do it. Good no call. Welcome back to Winnipeg and here on Remembrance Day we look back and honor our veterans across this country fighting for freedom in both world wars. Yes, those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom and the current men and women in the military. I sat on the plane coming from Vancouver with Bill McKeegan, who is celebrating his 90th birthday coming up. Bill, I know you're watching. He enlisted with the Canadian Army when he was 17 years old and has been in all the conflicts around the world representing Canada in the military. Thanks for watching, Bill. Your bombers are up front. Thanks for everything, Bill. Adams, with time, tries to drop it into McKinnis. Batted away by the safety, Brandon Alexander. It's a great pass defense that the Lions are facing. Their strength offensively is their passing game, is their receiving core. Even with Keon Hatcher out of the lineup, they still have tons of talent in the receiving core, but this is the number one pass defense in the league they're facing. It's best against best. Hatcher and TJ Lee both out for the rest of the game for the Lions. Pressure coming. Adams trying to spin away. No luck. Jeff Coat all over him. Bombers defense gets home. They move Jeff Coat from that defensive end spot inside. And when he's inside, he gets a different type of matchup that he might see on the edge going against a tackle. And it's just a straight bull rush on Suk Chung, the former bomber, right down Main Street, and gets Vernon Adams from behind. Well, and Adams came up limping. And now he holds his right knee on the sideline as things may have gone from bad to even worse for the Lions here. Flicked off. Can't get it away! That's going to be scooped up by the Winnipeg defense! Trying to push it down towards the end zone again! Driving in! Touchdown, Winnipeg! Are you kidding me? Bombers special teams find the end zone!
big block in the Grey Cup a year ago. And the backup safety who led the team in special teams tackles this year. University of Toronto product Nick has under review by the command center. A round of booze at IG Field. As they'll take a look at this one. I think they're just trying to see if Hallett was down by contact before crossing the plane of the goal line. And was that knee down before the ball crossed the plane? Tough to see. Tough to get the perspective from that, that angle. But I think Brian Cole was kind of pulling him along as Mackey tried to hang on. Let's get another look at it here. Can't see the ball in that look. Give me another one. Ruled a touchdown, so they have to find evidence to say it wasn't. Don't think you get that. I there, haven't seen it there. Hey, you're a fucking Hallett. After automatic review, the ruling on the field stands. We have a touchdown. Hallett blocks the kick, scoops it up, gets an escort from his teammates to the end zone. Leads this team in special teams tackles and comes up with a huge special teams touchdown. Castillo, one more. Bombers on top by 12. Vernon Adams, a little banged up himself, trying to get the BC Lions back on track. Nick Hallett's right here in this block, and the only guy that really has a shot at him right here is Rakumba. It's a personal protector, but that block is eaten up by Codwallader from the inside, number 47 for the Bombers, and then Hallett off the edge is clean. Scoops it up, and his teammates pick him up and escort him to the end zone. Right back out to go to work again. Williams has the back pedal, takes it at the 10. Back to the 20, Terry Williams to the 30, 35, staying on his feet, just shy of the 40. And the BC Lions offense will trot back out onto the field. Vernon Adams cut his leg off to take him out of this game, Glenn. Well, just before that semifinal against Calgary, he took the brace off and was good to the week of practice leading in. Start on their own 38. Trailing by a dozen. Four options to the right for Adams. They'll hand it off to Mizell. Short pickup to the left side. Boy, Adams is in some distress here. He's 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 hopping on that on that handoff inside. He he followed through with the. They're going tempo. But he followed through after the handoff and limped all the way around the corner. Four-yard pickup for Mizell. Second and six here for the visitors. And they come. Bombers show pressure. VA up for grabs. Intercepted by Winnipeg. Flag at the end of the play. Kyrie Wilson got his eyes on it that time and hauled it in. That ball. Tipped at the line of scrimmage. After the interception, major foul, face mask, BC number 19. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. I think it was Jeff Cope, but another ball tipped up at the line of scrimmage. Willie Jefferson with a couple, and it was 94 with the right hand. That tips it up right into the arms of Kyrie Wilson. And a turnover and great field position for Zach Kolaris. 
And here comes the face mask after the fact. Little frustration is Dominic Rhymes trying to make the tackle. Takes the helmet off of Wilson. Nothing going right for the BC Lions thus far this evening. Brady Oliveira finally contained on a carry right up the middle. That's looking frustrated. Campbell searching for answers. 98 yards on the ground for Brady Oliveira here in the first half. Just midway through the quarter. Suggestions before outlaw poison. That's it. Axe check on two. Ready? Kolaris has thrown the ball just five times in the game. Completed three of them. Second and eight is what he faces here. Escapes the pocket to the left. Now jump passes it over the top. Down inside the 25. Nice adjustment from Kolaris. And he gets it to Wolitarski. Well, it was the adjustment, yeah. And it was the pocket negotiation moving outside, buying himself some time. But I like how he set his feet again. Bo Levi Mitchell, our analyst down in the corner of the end zone, is going to love this. He's going to set his feet again, turn around, do that little hop, and get his body around in the right position. So it's not a real risky pass going to his left and trying to throw against the flow. Because he, he had his shoulders turned, turned his shoulders around and got it there. Fresh set of downs at the BC 23 for Winnipeg's offense. Trying to blow this open a bit. Six and a half to play in the second quarter. What is, what is that? Back on the ground. Johnny Augustine for the first time today. Positive gain on first down. Just a couple. Buck Pierce is, has, he can just stay on page one, the offensive coordinator here in Winnipeg. He can stay on page one of his playbook. He's just looking at it and say, page one is number 20. And if he's tired, 27 will take a <laughs> run or two. But that's Brady Oliveira's page one. And I don't think that he has turned that page, whereas Ryan Phillips, the DC, is trying to, he's he's deep in his playbook, trying to figure out how to stop it. Go! What is they need eight more yards here. Right up the middle, pressure. Kolaris trying to get away on the run. Throws it to the end zone. No. Rukamba working there against Dembski. Able to bat it away. That would have blown this thing wide open. Well, first of all, Kolaris does it again. I mean, he just, I, I still don't believe he gets enough credit for how good he is at feeling the pressure and escaping the pocket with his eyes downfield. All veteran quarterbacks do it well, but he does exceptionally well. And he gave Brady, or excuse me, Nick Dembski a shot here. Got it to the outside shoulder, but Rakumbo over the top makes a nice play. Castillo. 29 yard attempt just inside the left hash. And he keeps it home. I'll tell you what, that's a big play by Rakumba. And they're going to have a chance to come back, the Lions, in this one. They needed to hold him to a field goal there. They do that a few times along the way, don't they? Winnipeg on top, 19 to 3. Just 50 yards of offense for BC so far in this game. Adams, two of seven for 21. Mizell, three carries, and he's held shy of 30 thus far. He'll give it back to Mizell again, pushing ahead. And that'll be seven yards for Mizell at the top of your screen. That's sometimes football comes down to a numbers game, and the Bombers defensively are putting basically five guys in the box and they're telling the BC Lions offensively that if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to run the ball to do it. You're going to have to try to attack the line of scrimmage because we're going to put more guys in the back end and try to cover your big dynamic receivers. That's Richie Hall's plan so far. BC Lions dead last in running the ball this season and they won't get the first down here. Kyrie Wilson all over Mizell. And that'll bring up third and short. 
these this bomber team is just so battle tested playoff tested they played in the big games in back to back years they played in the Grey Cup Kyrie Wilson remember back in 19 his big interception in the Grey Cup in Hamilton they know what it takes to be ready for the big game third straight two and out for the Lions Flintoff they're gonna fake it Flintoff tries to drop it in and he does first down BC Flintoff the punter finds Renee he holds it in finally a spark for the Lions Patrice Rene the backup on the special teams he's on the punt cover team he goes out and yeah, boy, they needed something. They needed a spark. Maybe their punter can give it to them. Flintoff, pretty nice throw. I mean, okay. had a wobble on it, had a wobble on it, but he got there. I mean, for a punter. That's what I'm saying. First down, there you go. Right. Right. Big play, big call for the Lions. And it takes them on to Winnipeg's side of the field. Adams. In the pocket, down the field, Katoy almost intercepted. Katoy had some space. Parker got over and slid underneath it. VA had him. He had him on this road. And as he steps up in the pocket, he just never gets set. Looks like he almost jumped as he was trying to throw it. You can see that ball underthrown and given. Parker a chance at it, the best chance at it between the two. Katoy playing DB there to save the interception. Big, big second and ten. Midfield. Adams, deep drop, in trouble, not going to get away, taken down again. Malik Clements this time. And the fake punt that kept the drive alive does not pay off in the end. Jefferson with some pressure. Clements comes in and finishes the job. All right, coming up at the half, James, Jim, and Bo. We're going to have lots on Brady Owen, the pressure on VA. We're going to chat about the Eastern final. And Paul LaPolice has made nine coaches' playbooks on the Montreal <laughs> Alouettes. You're going to have so to tune in to the Grey Cops to see or all or of one them. One for every interception, every takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of great CFL playoff discussion coming up at halftime. Don't go anywhere. Flint off this time. No trickery, just boots it away. That'll bounce just inside the 20. Janari Grant picks it up, steps out of bounds after a 40-yard kick with two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. Brady Oliveira already at 98 yards in the game on the ground. Zach Kolaris, four of seven for 50 through the air. Yeah, I would suggest an important two minutes and 20 seconds for this Lions defense. Let's stay on the field here. Let's go. Lions defense that did not have Holatic coming into the game. They've lost TJ Lee. He's out for the rest of the game. And the Lions defense that has not had an answer against the run so far here tonight. Winnipeg starts this one on their own. 23. What is that? Oliveira will get the drive going. And that'll take him over 100 yards in the ball game. Always positive yards. Always low pad level when contact's about to happen. So that even if it's well defended, and that play was, he's still getting positive yards. That's about the best we've seen them do tonight against Oliveira, right? And it's still picked up three yards. 91% of their running plays this year against BC Go! ended in positive yardage. Pressure this time from the Lions. Kolaris backpedaling. Ball in the air grabbed by Lacombo. It'll be ruled an incomplete pass, but a big down there for the BC Lions defense. This was a screen attempt to Brady Oliveira out of the backfield. He's right here, and Oliveira is going to try to 
chip block on the combo. He doesn't give him enough, though. He just lets him go free, and then he's going to set up for the screen pass. But if Oliveira gives him a little bit more of a shoulder, it works, and the timing is there. But Lacombo beats that inside and gets his hands on the ball. First two and out of the ball game for the Bombers, leading 18 to 3. Lucky Whitehead and Terry Williams are back to return this kick. And that bounces right at the 45 and out of bounds. So decent field position for Vernon Adams Jr. with a minute and 43 seconds on the clock. Yeah, the chance to get something positive here. Even a field goal attempt is really only 20 yards away. I say only. This is the bomber defense. <laughs> 20 yards. <laughs> Probably right now to, that, to Vernon Adams Jr., that 20 yards feels like a mile. Vernon Adams Jr. with just 21 yards passing. He had 400 plus yards last week in the semifinal. Franchise playoff record. Bombers will bring five. Adams dumps it off. Mizell wrapped up immediately by Cole. Nowhere to go. A loss on the play. So good from the linebacking core here to show blitz in certain areas and come from different ones. Cole, Brian Cole is going to drop out. He lines up in the middle and drops out. And Adam Big Hill looks like he might be the guy in coverage. He's the guy who goes on the blitz. So Big Hill comes in. He's the guy who goes on the blitz. And Cole sits there and says, if you screen it, I'm going to track him down. And Big Hill is now down on the field with the training staff getting a look at him. Let's get a look. Take a look. Let's follow number four for the Bombers here. That's Adam Big Hill. Not sure he got contact. He just kind of ducked underneath and something didn't feel right. Right, right to that right knee. Hatcher had non-contact. TJ Lee, we didn't really pick up anything of significant contact. And now we see Big Hill going down with essentially non-contact issue here as well. Is this just a coincidence? I don't know what how else you would describe it. Three significant players in this ball game. Yeah, big time, big time, just unlucky. Hatcher and Lee will not return. And now Big Hill is going to gingerly walk off the field. That does not look good there, Glenn. They've been rotating Brian Cole through the linebacking core. They have Shane Gauthier and Jesse Briggs that can also be subbed in and see a playing time for those guys. But yeah, that's that's the heart and soul of their defense. That's their leader. Makes all the checks, calls all the defenses. He and Brandon Alexander behind him watch more video than coaches. Second and 11. Here come, here come. Go! Bombers will bring some heat. Adams in trouble, steps up in the pocket, trying to escape, still on his feet. Vernon Adams down to the 50 before they will eventually stop him with six yard pickup. And that'll bring up third down and they'll be forced to kick it away again. One of the guys that's in for Adam Big Hill is going to be Malik Clements. He's in at that middle linebacker spot. He goes on the blitz, and that's the guy who flushes Vernon Adams. He had a chance to sit in that pocket, maybe find a target downfield, but Clements got up the middle, got in his face, flushed him out of there, and held him short. Third and five. About a minute to go, flipped off. From his own 40, just gets it away. Low kick. Grant on a one hopper at the 20. Denarian Grant trying to escape. And he's taken down at the 40. Let's send it down to Claire Hanna for more on Brady Oliveira. 
Well, the Blue Bombers have had a whiteboard in their facility to track guys and how much they weight lift all season. And if a guy doesn't have a lot of check marks beside his name, well, the rest of the players can get on him. But Brady Oliveira has taken his weightlifting routine to a whole other level this season. He has not missed a single day. He goes before practice. He even goes the day after a game. He does things like hot tub, he does sauna, cold exposure. And when I asked him why it was so important for him to stay so dedicated, he said, I owe it to my team teammates because they deserve my best every single day guys well I think they get it don't they well they do and he, he told us that his body feels better at this point in the season than it ever has with all that training and weight training in the offseason really two reasons for training one is to improve what you do on the field for sure and hard to improve on those numbers first in all of them but also to protect yourself from injury. And Brady Oliveira has had just a record-breaking season. 55% of his yards after contact this year. Hard guy to stop. Here impossible to bring down. And 100 in the first half. Pretty good. Hey, Snoopy, 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 go, what is that? And I don't think they got this yeah, playoff Kalar in time. Kolaris was looking at the 22nd clock and realized he was running out of it. Time count violation. Winnipeg number eight. Penalty is loss of down. It'll be third down. Inside of three minutes before the half or inside of three minutes at the end of the game. Delay a game penalty is loss of down. So Michael O'Shea will have to punt it away. So they will kick it away. 23 seconds on the clock. Lucky Whitehead. Second time today he's been out there to return along with Terry Williams. Williams with a missed field goal return. In that wild game against Ottawa. Not a bad idea because they've been both these punters have been trying to kick it away from the dynamic returners back there and either Terry Williams or Janarian Grant going the other way. Put two back it's harder. Jamison Sheen. End over end, Lucky Whitehead waiting for it. He takes it at the 21. Whitehead trying to turn it up the field. Back to the 40, decent return from Lucky. 11 seconds on the clock. Well, we'll see what the strategy is for Jordan Maximic, Rick Campbell, and Vernon Adams Jr. here with 11 seconds to go. Do you take a shot down the field, see if you get a P.I. and maybe a chance at a field goal, or do you just kind of take your lumps into the first half, make some adjustments at halftime, get ready to stop Brady Oliveira defensively and get some traction on offense in the second half. From their 40, Adams over the middle, drops it in there to McKinnis, a big catch down to the 45 with five seconds on the clock. He's slow to get up too. Good throw, this may be the best for the Lions all game. Nice timeout. pocket, 25 yard game, and the Lions and Rick Campbell will call a timeout, give McKinnis a chance to regroup there. It's a little inside position here on Diedrich Nichols. Historically, not many teams will play man against this BC Lion receiving core. However, the Bomber secondary can do it. We've got the people back there that can get it done. Including that guy who led the league in picks. They mixed in Houston. And then Nichols, who had 12 knockdowns on the year. Evan Holm, 12 knockdowns on the year. Brandon Alexander had a couple of interceptions as well. VA's got to be efficient here. Go! Five seconds to go, working for the Winnipeg 45. Good throw. Gets it away quickly. Bobbles. Incomplete. One second on the clock. Well, the strategy is the quick throw. Get it to McKinnis there. He goes down. Chance for a field goal. Because right now, it's it's where the ball is, is out of the range of a realistic field goal attempt. And with Janarian Grant back there, if you miss, just too risky. So the strategy there, now it's going to be here, Mary likely. 
see if you can maybe draw a penalty flag and get an extra play. Would have been about a 52 yarder into a slight breeze for Sean White. His long is 51, and if you miss, like Lynn mentioned, could be trouble. Adams will roll out to his right, looking down the field. He's going to heave one up to end the half. Dominic Rhymes! McKinnis has it! A lucky bounce to McKinnis! And Hail Mary is answered for the BC Lions, who find some life with no time on the clock at the end of the first half. Wow. It just got quiet in here. It just got quiet in here, and that wasn't lucky. That was a designed Hail Mary with a trailer. McKinnis is the trailer. The first two in Hollands and Dominic Grimes are looking to make the tip. They just want to keep the ball alive with all those defenders back there. And the trailer in McKinnis, number 18, is waiting for the tip. And he reacts with the left hand. Wow. Sean White smooths one through and the bc lions just when it looked like they couldn't get anything going one big bomb from adams with no time on the clock finds his way into the hands of mckinnis and we got a game as we hit halftime brady Oliveira with 101 yards rushing is with our claire hannah Thanks, Dustin. Well, Brady, you told me you wanted a lot of touches in this game. On that first drive, I think you got the ball every single time. How did that set the tone for the game? Yeah, let's keep it going. Uh, you know, I know uh, what I can do for this football team. Uh, this offensive line is doing a great job right now. The receivers in the run game doing their thing right now. So uh, it's going to be a battle. Let's keep this thing going. You guys are still up, but you see how fast things can change in the CFL. What was your reaction to that last play? What do you guys need to do in the next half? Yeah, it's a CFL. You know, it's, uh, it's a very exciting game. We gotta put a show on, show on for our fans. Come out here in the second half and fly around and go win this game. Thank you, Brady. Thanks, Claire. Okay, let's send it over to you, James. Welcome back to IG Field in Winnipeg, where the Bombers lead the Lions 18 to 10. Some life at the end of the half, and Justin McKinnis is with Claire Hanna. Justin, first of all, that was a crazy play to end the half. Was that designed or was that a hail mary? Just a hail mary. You know, we need a play. I had to come up big. You know, and I dropped the one before. Just have to come back and make a play for our team. Right now, you guys are facing some adversity. There's some players out. You've been down before. What was the message at half? Just one play at a time. One play at a time. 30 minutes left. The game wasn't won in that first half. So uh, just one play at a time. Don't worry about the game. Don't worry about the score until the clock just hit zero. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. There you go. One play at a time. Really can't look at it any other way, can you? Well, yeah, I mean, it, by the, you know, the Lions will get the ball first to start this second half. Vernon Adams gets a chance. They. They took the ball to start the game, but clearly the Bombers would rather have that little bit of a win yeah. in the fourth quarter. Thought maybe Winnipeg would take the ball here and try to reestablish their dominance on the ground. Instead, they will kick it away and take what is a little bit of a gusty wind right now behind them in the fourth quarter. Williams on the return from his own 15. Williams cuts inside around home, still going. Terry Williams all the way out past midfield. Excellent field position to start the game. A 43-yard return, start the half, I should say, for Terry Williams. Yeah, sometimes it's the returner that makes the big play all by himself with great speed and quickness. This was just well blocked, and Terry Williams followed those blocks and picked his way through those blocks to get past midfield and get that great field position. Basically now just a first down away from possible points. Talking field goal first, then you go major. First time tonight, the BC has started with the ball in Winnipeg, Winnipeg territory. Adams has time here. Now he's gonna be in trouble, trying to escape, will not. Jeff Cohn is there again. Vernon Adams had time but couldn't find anybody down the field. Well, he got locked into a crossing route, and you can't be too long with these bookends. Mention it off the top that the tackles for the Lions really got their work cut out for him. Now, it was a pretty good job initially by Kent Perkins on Jeff Cohn, but he keeps working, and because that crossing route that VA wanted was covered, Jeff Coe got there. Fourth sack of the game, a loss of five. Empty backfield for Adams this time. Jefferson's coming, Adams spins away. 
avoids Wilson. Nowhere to go. Willie Jefferson finally gets the ball, pops up, and Adams hops back on it. Oh, that would have been trouble. And VA comes up limping again. Yeah, that knee's bothering him, but watch the relentless pass rush. This time it's number five's turn, and Willie Jefferson keeping after him, keeping at it, keeping at him. Had a couple shots at him. Wrap him up. That long, those long arms actually strip the ball. A loss of 18 yards. Third and 33. Great field position. See you later. Flintoff kicks it away. Grant on the return, wrapped up by Renee after a 55-yard kick. Brady Oliveira, first half. He was cooking, wasn't he? Well, he's done it all year. I mean, he is sort of the heart and soul of this team offensively, and it trickles down to all the other phases. I mean, it's the way he approaches the game. He runs with great physicality, hits the whole hard, and as soon as you brace to make impact, that's when he uses his quickness and bounces a play. But he started out in that first drive with every carry, nine touches, 80 yards down the field, touchdown. Now, oh, 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 Kolaris hops on it. The exchange did not go cleanly, and Zach Kolaris aware enough to avoid disaster and hop on that ball. Wow, that was a close one, especially that deep in their own end. And Zach Kolaris here, this is the ride and the side where you put it in there, and sometimes you will pull that ball out. Looks like he wanted to pull it there, didn't he? Yeah, he wanted to pull it, and Brady Oliveira had kind of grabbed the handle already. Deep pull will replace. Backside cart ball hook swing. Oh, I'm ready. Loss of three yards, second and 13. Winnipeg. Yeah. yeah. Dominating a lot of this game, but they only right here, right here. lead by eight. Go! What is Passing what is situation that? for Zach. They'll bring a little bit of heat. Kolaris gets it away, batted down, played neatly by Rugamba. Lawler wants a flag, and oh, he gets a late one. That was very late. It was, but it looked like to me there may have been some contact. I think it was Rukumba out there in coverage. BC number 32. Spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. No, it wasn't Rukumba, but let's just, yeah, it was Rukumba. And, the, and see that left hand? Well, the rule of thumb here is you can have the left hand on the back of the receiver as long as you don't turn him. Almost looked like he sort of just ran through him on that one. You see how Lawler kind of turned yeah. sideways as he went down? That turned Lawler enough no. to draw the penalty. Is, it was late, though. That? Oliveira tracked down from behind as the BC Lions brought Sales down from the secondary, and he hops all over him. This is, you know, we talked about it at halftime. The guys in the panel talked about how do the Lions start to try to stop the run on first down? Well, they just showed you on that last play. You sometimes got a blitz from the secondary. You got to bring some extra zip, zip. players up into the box like the guys talked about. Cancel the gaps and maybe catch Oliver from behind. Go! Second and nine. What is that? Kolaris. Out to his right. Dumps it over. O'Leary Orange has it for a first down. And Zach got out of the pocket. Created a little something on the run. Yeah, you can tell the veteran, Zach Kolaris now. He, he understands that there's, you know, he wants to get back control of this game again. You know, so that was this, this was this kind of play. You know, don't need a big one down the field. Got a penalty. That got the drive, kept the drive alive. Now let's just... Get a couple of first downs and and get back in control of this game. Don't let that Hail Mary pass linger into hey, Pim, Pim. Live from Trish Wright, tough. into third Monday, quarter Mike momentum for the Lions. Well, last year in the win, Zach just 178 yards, touchdown interception, only threw the ball 20 Go. times. What? He's only thrown what it nine that? times so far today. But Oliveira had 130 yards. Yes, he did. Here's Dembski. Dembski could not hang on was a little bit behind him and that'll bring up second and ten Well, the good news for bomber fans is that Dembski hasn't shown any 
adverse effects from the ankle injury. It was he was a game time decision. He looks like he's running well. Now clearly Buck Pierce has not called as many plays to Dembski as he would. But when Oliveira was running in the first half the way he did, no need to. Another second and long situation. Oliveira over to the left of his quarterback. Kolaris has time. Far side of the field for Lawler. Running in front of Gary Peters and Kenny Lawler comes up with his biggest catch of the ball game. Zach Kolaris knew that this route was going to take a long time to develop for Kenny Lawler. So he plays it that way from the pocket. He drops back deep first and then he rolls out a little bit to his left. He lets Lawler have the time to get that far down the field. Working quickly here. Oliveira wrapped up immediately by Josh Woods after a pickup of about three yards. One more time to that Lawler catch. You just it takes time so watch how Zach is going to float out to the left side of that pocket so he's given Lawler more time to run a couple of extra moves down the field it looked like it was going to be a post then he went corner then he went back to the out big first down see if they can convert here second and six no Eighth play of the drive what for is Winnipeg what is that? leading 18-10 Kolaris looking for Lawler again. Goes up. Oh my goodness. Did he come down in bounds? Oh, it looks like it. Gary Peters is arguing it, but the officials look like they're going to give it to him. Let's take a look. How did he do this? Well, we, we shouldn't be surprised anymore, Dustin. <laughs> Number 89 can come up. He got the elbow in. Just got the elbow in. Kolaris fakes the handoff, turns, looks to the end zone, down the field! No! Bailey working against Quincy Moje. Let's go back to that Lawler spectacular catch on the deep out. Body control, concentration, great hands, and pulls the elbow to the inside of his body so that he can get the elbow down inside. He knew exactly where he was on the field. Elbow down inbounds. What a great catch by Kenny Lawler. And we really shouldn't be surprised to see it. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, though. You know? That shouldn't be routine, but he would say that's routine. routine. Him, right? yeah. he would say. Yeah. Another day at the office. Tenth play of the drive. They opened the game with a tenth play drive. Tenth play of the drive here, second and ten. Kolaris, far side. Tackled immediately by Jones. And that will bring up third down as that was back to about the line of scrimmage. And that's it. But a good drive for the Bombers. Just... Stay on the field offensively for a few first downs. You can tell it was just almost like Zach Kolaris in the huddle was saying, calm down, guys. We're going to get a little drive together. I got a couple ideas for 89. Just to control things. Yeah, right. get, get some control of the game. Field goal, get some points on the board again. Back to two possessions. 34-yarder from Castile, one for two here under the lights at IG Field. And that one is off the uprights. You could hear the clang throughout the stadium. And the Bombers lead points off the board. 18-10 they lead. Time now for your Coors Light moment of chill and maybe the only moment that you'll see this guy chilling. Getting ready, getting the crowd engaged, a couple of visualization, couple of thoughts on the sideline, and then, boy, did he go to work early. 100 first half yards. Go! This drive starts on the 30. After a 10-play drive that came up empty, Adams had time. Now he's in trouble, trying to get away, and he does. B.A. still on the run. Throws it with his left hand to get it out of bounds. Bombers all over him. 
but he extended and extended and finally ran out of room. VA is having, he's got enough time initially. His offensive line, I don't think, is the problem so far. I mean, that first read he's got, but it is covered. He is having to go to the second and third, and then he's trying in the scramble situation, find a guy, and there wasn't anybody open after that either. So he just wanted to save the loss. Second and 10. Adams. Deep drop down the field for Hollins. First time today, first down for the BC Lions. Yeah, and Hollins gets open, and this is this is the difference. Once again, initially, Vernon Adams Jr. has time in the pocket. He just needs Real to find a receiver back. open. Over switch. Which is Over switch. just bizarre Over switch. to be saying about this Lion receiving court. Now, they don't have Keon Hatcher any longer, but Lucky Whitehead's no slouch. He's in the slot to the left of Adams. VA waits. Now down the field, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Hollins has it again, working against Parker. Back to back to Alexander Hollins, and they're down to the 40. And Bo Levi Mitchell mentioned it at halftime. Quarterback in the league said, you just got to start slinging at some of these receivers. Get them open. Time Parker kind of lost where he was and lost where the ball was. Got a thousand yard receiver out there. Adams to Lucky Whitehead out in the flat. Has a couple of blocks. Uh -oh. Almost the ball. But Rhymes is able to hop on it. Let's send it down to Claire Hanna for an injury update. Yeah, guys, and at the end of the first half, we saw Adam Big Hill go down. He was parted off of the field, and the Bombers linebacker will not return with a lower body injury. Big Ryan Hill. Cole's out there right now, Malik Clements. Big Hill joining TJ Lee. And Keon Hatcher out for the game. Star power on both sides of the ball. Trips up to the right for Adams. That's where he looks. And now he's in trouble. Not going to get away this time. Took too long. The Bombers get there. He's grinding it. Yeah, he? he's getting it out. Again, time initially. Take a look at three men up front. And they'll add in a third in Malik Clements. You see he's got time initially, but his first read is not there. Neither is his second. So the time he gets to his third, that's collapsed. 43-yarder from Sean White. And he knocks it through. Second today. And the Lions have cracked within five. Beautiful shot. Packed IG field. Hey, kill, 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 kill. Their bombers so lead it away five. So audible, Dustin. Whoa, baby boy. What's going on there? Woody Bear. Woody Bear. He saw some movement. Barreling through. Well, I called it an audible because at the line of scrimmage, you could hear Zach Kolaris on the mic say, Kill, 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 meaning he's killing the play they called in the huddle, and he's moving to an audible that he wanted to call in the line of scrimmage, and I'm not sure there was early movement out there. Procedure, yep. back number 64. There was. Five penalty remains first down. That's Liam Dobson, the extra offensive lineman, and it was gonna be that extra offensive lineman out there, the tight end spot, and Woody Barron, He's going on movement. He lifts his hands up and he's rushing. He saw him leaning back. Eh? He goes, I just got to make sure they're aware. Eight sacks on the season. Kill, kill. For Woody Barrett. Go, go. What, is, what is that? First and 15. Kolaris shot on the field. Looking for Dembski. Broken up. Flag at the 55. Sales got in there and broke that up as he tried to drop one in the bucket for Nick. 
Marcus Sales makes a great play. I, I don't think that flag has anything to do with Sales. It looked like it was. I think it was out earlier, wasn't it? It was out earlier, and Recumba put his hands in the air like he was a guilty party and is arguing his case right now. Illegal contact. BC number nine. Ten yard penalty. Remains first down. You can only make contact at five yards. So there's the five yard mark. And there's number nine, Mike Jones, as the ref just called him. And he steps up, gets in the way of Wolotarski, and gets the illegal contact penalty. Tough one to take when you get bowled over like that. Jones, okay, part of bomber, this. two great cup rings for him back okay, in group. 19 and 21. Yep. Go! What is What is it? So first and five. Augustine into the game. Trying to pick up the first down. He will be stopped just short. Zach Kolaris right now, 9 of 15 for 99 yards he has done some damage this season against bc well in the first game the lions blew out the bombers here the only loss at home in the second game the bombers blew out the lions that was the august game and va didn't play in that game but zach Kolaris had his big one at the time his biggest of the season and then backed it up in the overtime game with almost 400 yards passing when the Bombers locked up first place in the division. Second in a yard on the Winnipeg 49. Brook up into the game. He will find the space to pick up a Winnipeg first down. Really in the CFL now, second and one, or third and one has turned into a goal for Yeah, nervous, right? It's pretty much you, you you have the confidence in your own line and your yard off the ball and if you get on your first two downs you get nine yards you're going to go for it with a yard to go and most teams have a lot of different looks they all look the same quarterback slamming into the back of the old line <laughs> but there actually is uh, some strategy design, are you yeah there, there is some strategy to it go what is what is that? Fresh set of downs, first and ten from the 51. Pressure right up the middle. Zach gets it away because of that pressure a little too early, and it falls incomplete. Take a look at Kenny Lawler's route running, and Zach Kolaris will tell you, and will tell anyone that'll ask him that if if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, he loves his chances with Kenny Lawler. Even against Gary Peters? Hey, yeah, he doesn't, it left, doesn't matter. That's right, 64 spear, backside stack, Padre check, on one, ready? Lawler, three catches on five targets, 42 yards. One of the Go! highlight real variety. Second and 10. Kolaris, pressure coming, Betts was almost there. And that is complete to Lawler, but right to midfield. And that'll bring up third down. And they'll be forced to kick it away. Now Gary Peters is an all-star. Boy, did he have a big pick in that semifinal against Calgary. So this time Ryan Phillips puts Gary Peters into that zone look. A little bit of a zone defense. See Marcus Sales bails. He's got deep. You got a linebacker inside, and Gary Peters says, I'll just let you throw it underneath the second and ten and come up and make a clean tackle. Third and six. Javison Sheen stands on his own 41. Terry Williams lurks back waiting around his own 10 for this kick. Gets it away cleanly. Williams guides it into his arms at the 10. Breaks one tackle and another. And then eventually taken down after a 45-yard kick. Vernon Adams Jr. on the road as the BC Lions with its striking distance of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Welcome back to Winnipeg. Time now for Tim Hortons. Loads of taste, and this is about as tasty as they come. Well, it's sweet. It's just sweet. It is a good one. 
elbow in. Lawler, again, another highlight reel shot. As for a first down. He knows it. Great stuff. First and 10 for BC on their own 23. We thought the crowd at IG Field was loud earlier. Wait until we get into the fourth quarter of this game. Adams fakes the toss, turns, flags as he rolls out to his right down the field. Has McKinnis. But multiple flags on this play as VA turned that to the right and hit McKinnis for 11. Offside, BC number 34. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's a fullback, David Mackey. Yeah, Mackey was into the short side of the field up at the top of uh, the pitcher. He's up here, and as he comes down in this waggle motion, he gets just a little bit across the line of scrimmage. And that sideline official sees him. He's actually, it's hard to tell, but he's about a yard and a half over the line. Really Jefferson saw him too. Back to bump five. Adams down the field, over the middle, McKinnis! That is spectacular! As he goes up over top of Nichols and hauls it in, that'll put him over 100 yards receiving on the day. Caught the Hail Mary at the end of the half off the tip from Dominic Rhymes, and this is just strong hands over the middle. He's covered really well on the play. Diedrich Nichols is on the high shoulder, goes for the strip, but that Height advantage and the strong hands going back the opposite direction to pull it in. That's a huge catch. All the way up to the BC 51 Bombers showing some heat. That's what they'll bring. Go. VA trying to get away. He won't. Crabby right down the middle. The heart of the offensive line. And he busts through and wraps up the BC Lions quarterback. Richie Hall dialed it up. Send the blue house. Send it. Exactly what they did. A loss of 11 as the Bombers try to secure another trip to the Grey Cup. Fourth quarter action coming up here in Winnipeg where the Bombers lead by five, seven sacks of Vernon Adams already in this game for the Winnipeg defense. Yeah, when you look at the numbers, when you think about that third quarter, the long drive by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers that ended in the field goal attempt that hit the upright, they got no points out of that. I think if you're the BC Lions, you're saying, what's happening? How are we still in it? But it's a one possession game. They've got that dynamic offense. Now they need a big play here to try and convert this series or else they're gonna have to punt. But if you're the Lions, you're happy where you're at. One possession, you got your top receiver on the sideline, and you're one of your top defensive backs and leaders on defense in TJ Lee. Bombers had six sacks last time against the BC Lions. Seven more here already. 13 over six quarters. Been a long night for Vernon Adams. Has time here over the middle. Lucky Whitehead's got it, and he's just shy of a first down by about a yard. Uh, right at the marker, and like I was going to say, right at the 50 yard line, which is a yard from the marker. And as we just said, in these situations, third down in the CFL now, it's automatic. Go for it. Vernon Adams steps up here. They need a yard. Got to get to the 49. Straight ahead. And this should be close. Initial thought was he had it. Big Jake Thomas in there. Remember, this is Adam Big Hill's money time. This is short yardage huddle, place huddle. where he goes over the top. Hey. He will it's not return to this left. game. It's going to be quartz left. Duo skin, C43 base, W skinny bike. Lions are Art in the quick. huddle. They're going to have to move here so they can set the chains. They needed to get to the 49. That ball is basically been placed right at the 49. It's almost splitting it, isn't it? And it's going to be inches. Wow. They got it. It is a game of inches. It really comes down to that, doesn't it? They needed two and they got it. Got it by two inches, so here we go. 
New set for VA. Justin McKinnis slipped on the route. Looking for McKinnis. Little bobble. Down he goes. Houston takes it away. Justin McKinnis starts here in the backfield, and he's going to run this curl route. And usually you see a guy running a curl like this, he's going to come back to the football. But McKinnis gets all tangled up, and he can't come back. And that's where Demario Houston says, well, I'll take it. Very, Thank you very much. I'm going the other direction. And as Vernon Adams was getting blocked by Cam Lawson, he tosses him to a ground. No flag there. Handed off to Brady Oliveira, but he's wrapped up immediately by Woods, and that'll bring up second and ten. Sometimes it's on the throw, sometimes it's on the receiver, and Justin McKinnis will tell you he's got to come back and compete for that ball, but he got tangled, couldn't come out of his break. And the leader in interceptions on the season gets one in the West Final. Seven in the regular season, a big one right there. That's not bad. That's not bad. That works. That worked. <laughs> Good job. Nice sign. Second nope. and ten. What is, what is that? Passing situation here for Kolaris. Has time. Over the middle. Down the field. Lawler's wide open. Of all the guys he finds wide open, it's Kenny Lawler, and he's down to the 25. Couple things here. First of all, complimentary routes to the wide side of the field for Kenny Lawler. Dembski is going to get the assist because he's going to clear it out and you'll see late in the play Lawler on that big deep route. So a couple things have to happen. First, you got to draw coverage. That's what number 10 does in Nick Dembski. That opens up Lawler in the middle and to do all that, Zach Kolaros needed time and he got it. Right tight. Polaris, best in the league with a clean pocket by far. And he's had time back there so far today. Go! What is What is that? Now they'll hand it off to Oliveira. And here is Zach Polaris talking about Kenny Lawler as a weapon. He's huge. Uh, everybody know how, knows how talented he is. Um, you know, the teams always try to find a way to, to put an extra guy, you know, in his zone or an extra guy covering him. And, uh, you know, so that helps us in other areas. But, uh, you know, I tell him all the time, if, if there's ever a situation where it's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, the, the ball's coming your way. You know, it's going up. And uh, he's just a special talent. Kolaris has 11 pass completions today. Almost half of them have gone to Kenny Lawler. Second and six here. Kolaris looks to his left, throws quickly. He's got Dembski for a first down. Maybe a little bit more. Dembski down to the five. They'll try to push him through. Not this time. Lions defense will stop him just short. Looked okay on that one, didn't he? Yeah, and that's the one where it really is testing the ankle because he had to cut back. His route took him outside. And now he's got to go out the sideline there, plant hard and cut back. And you can see he can get it done. And he's been great at it all season. But on that ankle, you never know. Hasn't been a problem. Second trip inside the red zone today for Winnipeg. The only other one came on their very first drive of the ball game. Prukop in. Zach will watch alongside his head coach to see if they can finish the job. First and goal for the BC Lions three. Trying to restore some control in the ball game. Brady Oliveira stands in behind Prokop. They give it to him. Oliveira trying to push ahead. Lions deny him. 
on first down. It literally takes all 12 to get him on the ground, and the Lions get it done. So we go back to regular offense. We're going to leave Dakota Prukop out there and run this option style run offense with Oliveira in the backfield. Is there a Prukop keeper here? Does he take it out at one point? Yeah, yeah you, you got the whole RPO ride to the side type of plays. Ryan Phillips. Second and goal from the two. Prukop this time will keep it. Sir. Look, combo's there to stop him. And that brings up third down for Winnipeg. Well, well, not only the stop, Dustin, but the stop and holding them three yards short, which makes this an interesting decision. The is coming out. I was going to say, I think Michael O'Shea may take the points here. I mean, you, and when I say take the points, take the field goal, the yeah. higher percentage. That's monster defense for the BC Lions. Three yards out against this run team and this whole line stop them like and that. stop them twice. This will make it an eight point game. Castillo, just an 11 yarder. And he punches the chip shot through, but a big hold for the BC Lions defense. Brukop could not find a way to the end zone. We got a one possession game. What a night, Saturday evening here in Winnipeg. Yeah! BC gets the ball back after the field goal, of course, on their own 40. Adam stumps it off to Mizell. Can he find a block or two? Pushes it ahead. Looked like they might get nothing. Get about four when it's all said and done. That's where the crowd becomes tough for Vernon Adams to try and call it. They've been thunderous tonight. Hey, hurry, 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 hurry. And if he wants to try and make adjustments based on what the Bombers do defensively, he can't do it. He's going to have to signal his guys. That's why you fight all season in the regular season for home field advantage. That came down to a battle between these two clubs. Dallas won by Winnipeg. Adams, second and six for his own 44. In trouble again. Taken down again. Malik Clements is there. Eighth sack of the game. His second. And the crowd gets going and, and Vernon Adams is trying to call lucky whitehead didn't know the call he wasn't sure so he gets up to the line of scrimmage not that vernon adams uh, jr had time to throw it to lucky anyway because good pressure out front and malik clements cleans it up vernon adams under pressure all night long clinton towering kick grant Takes it just inside the 25, 46 yard kick. Engineering Grant gobbled up by Archibald before he can get back to the 35. Adams, nowhere to go. Bombers defense doing that thing again, aren't they? Time now for Twisted T. Tackle your thirst. And when it comes to tackles, how about 14 seconds of work here to find VA? 14 seconds, a couple cracks at him, and then at the end of it, force fumble. Stats machine. Willie Jefferson, two sacks tonight. Clements, two sacks tonight. Jeff Coat, two sacks tonight. Cramby and Wilson each have one as well. You went off the back. Polaris. Gets the ball, Brady Oliveira, 70 yards of offense. On the first drive, just 48 cents. Kolaris over the middle. How about the hands on Kenny Lawler to haul that thing in? Yeah, I watched the pre-snap motion there for the Bombers and the Lions, and Ryan Phillips has Gary Peters now tracking Kenny Lawler. 
Lawler came out of the backfield. He's right up here, and you'll see number one trying to get to them. This makes it very difficult for defensive backs because they can't get really set up. Now, Peters is in pretty good position here. But Lawler's still going to make the catch, but it looks like Ryan Phillips is trying to just match him up one-on-one -on -one with Peters. This is that time of game we've seen so many times with Winnipeg where a Brady Oliveira drive kind of seals it away. They start this one with a pass to Lawler, but sets up second and two. Oliveira towards another first down, and he's got it. Five and a half to play. about 35 yards of real estate right here right now on this series that Ryan Phillips needs his guys to come up with a stop that was the 20th carry of the ball game for the hey, so CFL's top. West Division most outstanding player Brady Oliveira he's got his run stop and D in there now including Ryder Varga for a little bigger linebacker up at the line of scrimmage wide what is, what is that Polaris he's gonna go down the field Mike O'Shea is looking at it. He's waiting and he's going to challenge. Well, he's got his. He was looking at it and he is going to challenge. He wasted no time, did he? Well, he was just waiting for his video crew upstairs. Each, each head coach will have a coach down to see if they when can the challenge. Winnipeg is challenging that there was pass interference on the play. We will review the play. That first look, it looked like Mike Jones was there a little early and not looking back to the ball and running into Lawler. I think this is going to be overturned. It'll be P.I. This will be a good look at it. You know, a great straight recovery from Jones to even get back like there because Lawler like had separation. The there. But that's a hard one to not. Well, he got there early. Yeah. And and basically didn't allow Lawler to get After back to the After review by ball. the command center, we have pass interference. BC number nine. Ball will be placed at the 25-yard line. Automatic first down. Huge play in this ball game as it takes them immediately within field goal range. Second penalty of the game against the former bomber. Let's take one more look. Well, Lawler's open, and Mike Jones has to really dig to get back there, and then he sort of panics right at the point of attack where the ball is about to get to Lawler. Hits him first. Saw that first replay a lot. Not, no question. I think that's exactly what Mike O'Shea saw because the flag did come out pretty quickly. Down to the BC 25 as the Bombers get to seal what this is, one away. What is that? Kolaris, Dembski, Dembski tackled immediately by Marcus Sales. Field goal important here for the Bombers as well. So Kolaris knows that very well. Like, want to still be aggressive? You're still thinking major, no question. Second and ten. But field goal makes it two possessions. Hey, blow blood here, blow blood. Yo, knee. Kolaris was telling the official that one of his guys is bleeding. Kolonkowski may be, is he leaking? Yeah, I must get a look at it here. Well, he hasn't snapped the ball. They're looking at his hand. Not an ideal situation for didn't make, didn't make the all-star team, but had an all-star year. Very well could have. Yeah, had an all-star year. Tough, tough on the O-linemen. Sometimes it's really tough. And I'm not taking anything away from the guys who did make it. Patrick Newfeld certainly 
deserves it, as did Jamaric Hardrick. Uh, Jam Jamarcus Hardrick. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> and as they keep working <laughs> to fill in for Colin Kowski here, but boy, he had a great season. And we talked about Winnipeg having seven offensive linemen dress to Ely. It's quickly warming up with a few snaps along the sideline. We'll step into the middle of this line. Polakowski quickly over there on the sideline, making sure he'll be good to get back in. Second and ten, you come right down the middle here for DC's defense. You leave Kenny Lawler in a one on one. He's got Gary Peters out there. Gun. Top of your what screen. Is, what is that? Polaris pressured up the middle on the run. Out to his right. Will they get any slides? Smart move by Zach. He felt that heat coming. And he decided to give himself up, and they will settle for a field goal attempt. Yeah, take a look what Ryan Phillips does here on Kenny Lawler. I, I don't think there's any question that Kolaris wanted to go to him out here. He's got Gary Peters one, and he's going to take Marcus Sales. You don't see him yet, but he's going to be over the top up here high. So you got two now BC. basically bracketing right there on that number one receiver in Kenny Lawler. So knowing the field goal is important, Kolaris makes a decision. Stay in bounds, work the clock a little bit, get your field goal team out there. BC taking a timeout. Castillo, who missed from 34 earlier in the game. This one will be from 35. Big one to push this beyond the eight points where it currently sits, just inside the right hash from Castillo for some breathing room in the West final. And that is up, and he's got it, knocks it home, a big one for Sergio Castillo, and the lead climbs to 11 with 3.10 on the clock. Real smart decision by Zach Polaris there. Not to force it to Lawler against double coverage. The West Division Championship trophy. Gets on a plane. Not that plane? Pro probably not that. That'd be plane. a lot of trips one Gets at a time. Gets on a plane. And heads to Hamilton. BC. They, they know a thing or two about coming back in tough spots. Down 24 13, three minutes to work. They've been at their best tonight when VA's been throwing it down the field, though. They pretty much have to do it with the time, their worst enemy. Adams, this time to Rhymes, taken down immediately by Brian Cole. That's the first catch of the ball game for Dominic Rhymes, if you can believe it. Don't go anywhere, trip to the Great Cup, on the line with less than three to play. Couple of head coaches, Mike O'Shea looking to make it four straight trips to the Grey Cup. Rick Campbell looking for his fourth trip to the Grey Cup. Two minutes and 44 seconds away from figuring out which head coach will be leading his team for a date next weekend with the Montreal Alouettes. Second and five here for Adams. Four-man pressure. Adams gets it away to Rhymes again. Tried to one-handed incomplete. And that'll bring up a huge third down. Vernon Adams Jr., of course, going nowhere. Staying in the huddle at third and five. Three-down football now. Down two possessions. That's what that field goal did. Because if it wasn't for that field goal, BC would be punting right now. IG Field crowd, all of them, over 30,000 to their feet. If there was a roof on IG Field, it'd be blown off right now. Go! 
Adams needs five to keep the drive alive. Has time down the field for Rhymes. It hangs up there, broken up. Rhymes working and could not haul it in. Evan Holm, a sensational season with an exclamation point right there. Yeah, second in the league in knockdowns with his teammate Didrick Nichols and of course the leader in that category was Jefferson on the D line but home has had just an all star season. There's only so many that can make that team but in his second year man he went down hand checking both ways I think it's a good no call by the officials balls about to arrive Holmes trying to fight off you can see Dominic Rhymes pushing trying to get some separation that's a big play. 5-11 versus 6-4-2. Turnover on downs. Winnipeg will take it over at the 45. Prukop into the game. He's going to keep it, pushing it ahead. And that will bring up second down. Oh, the Lions will come back out. Ryan Phillips does legit make the corrections in this run stopping category to try and limit Brady Oliveira in the run game in the second half. That's the 10 yards in the second half. Yeah. However, Kenny Lawler went to work and when we talked to Michael O'Shea this week, he told us when we had talked about the injuries and how that may affect the team and how the confidence was of the team and this is a veteran group and he said, you know, we feel like we got enough when it comes to talent and that we built a team that can win in a lot of different ways. There is not just one script for this bomber team. Rukov remains out there. They'll give it to Brady Oliveira. And he picks up a couple of yards, but that will bring up third down. And Jamison Sheen will come out to kick this away. Yeah, I, I think this is a good call as well because You'd be looking at a 47 yard field goal attempt with Terry Williams back there if you miss it and bigger guys that cover on a missed field goal than do on a punt cover team. So just put that that punt team out there with two possessions put it in the corner limit the return put your defense back on the field. Clock's ticking down here. Bobber's got to get it away. And they will. Sales on the return. Big block from Williams and Sales forced out of bounds at the 20 with just a minute and 26 seconds left. There's no time to waste for the BC Lions. They have to score twice. Well, and they have to push the ball. You're talking double moves, out and ups. Vernon Adams nicked early in this one. Has been gutting it out. Flash 65 match. W Tuna Post. RJ Tuna. That's why. Hear how loud he's trying to yell through this crowd to get even the call. First and ten on the BC 20. Their last hope here. Adams escapes the pocket down the field for Lucky Whitehead. That yeah, falls incomplete. Roughing the passer. There's a flag behind Vernon Adams for roughing the passer as Glenn picked up. Major foul, roughing the passer. Winnipeg number 44. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Shane Goche gets called on this. I know the fans here don't like it, but this is the correct call. He's going to come in and he could have pulled up here. Vernon Adams throws it and he decides I'll put the shoulder into him anyway. Big hit, but it, it, it was one that Goche could have pulled off from, and that's why the official threw the flag. First and ten from the BC 35. Adams got to have a big chunk over the middle. Lucky Whitehead turns it upfield, takes it down onto Winnipeg's side of the field to the Bomber 51 with 69 seconds on the clock. Right. Every... Call him on the line of scrimmage, of course. 
Try to get a snap before that clock starts again. 24 yards into the hands of Lucky Whitehead. Pressure up the middle. Adams gets it away over the middle again, and that is broken up. Home working against Rhymes. He got him again. Now the, the Bombers secondary is going to play off a little bit. They're going to give, you know, those 10 yarders. Brandon Alexander, the safety, probably a little bit deeper. Four, five more yards by the snap of the ball will be around here. There he is there getting them lined up right. So there is room underneath, but the problem is for BC Lions, the clock. Well, the play clock's ticking down here, too. This will be a tight one to get off. They do. Adams right up the middle. Nowhere to go. Sack number nine. Ten of the game. Brian Cole this time. And Adams is up and hobbled one more time. Bombers. Defense dancing. Hey, fire. Well, and it's really been my committee for the Bomber defense. A couple by Willie Jefferson and the big names, but Malik Clements is a couple. Brian Cole has got there. Got a bunch of backup players that have stepped up big tonight. Third and long. Any hope. The slim hopes they have. They got to have this. Down the field for Rise. Intercepted by Holm. And he's going to take it all the way back down the field to the 40. Evan Holm, another block, stays on his feet. And Winnipeg will seal it. eventually trapped him down and Winnipeg will win the West again. I think Dominic Rhymes was the attendant target here and he tried to sort of draw the penalty flag. Yeah, I, he, did. he didn't have a chance I don't think at this play so he kind of runs into Parker tackles him, and, tackles him and looks at the official saying what do you think was that enough for give a it, penalty? Give it to me. Meanwhile Evan Holmes says, I'll just sit underneath this one and can't fault Vernon Adams for that. He just, he had to throw it up and hope he either got a flag or a miraculous catch. The Bombers are heading back. Winnipeg finds a way. Zach Kolaris takes a knee and he is about to be the first quarterback in the history of this wonderful league to start four consecutive breakups. He's fired up as he should be as Winnipeg gets the job done and books a ticket to Hamilton to take on the Montreal Alouettes. team in the West in the regular season. Sellout crowd after sellout crowd. Number one tailback. Most veteran and battle-tested quarterback. Hey, it was a valiant effort by the Lions. They kept it close right down to the wire, but not enough for this veteran Winnipeg Blue Bomber team. They will go and face the Montreal Alouettes in Hamilton. In order to be the best of the West, you have to beat the best in the West. And the BC Lions unable to do so here today vernon adams banged up early fought through it tried to keep the bc lions in this football game and really he did and here in the fourth quarter they were down five at one point glenn and winnipeg just managed to seal it away well as coach o'shea told us they are a team that's built to win in a lot of different ways. You know, early on, they had the run game going in that first half, 100 yards for Brady Oliveira in that half. The Lions made some adjustments defensively. They brought some secondary help. Keep in mind, they lost Keon Hatcher early in the game. They lost TJ Lee early. But listen, the Bombers didn't have Dalton Schoen tonight. Yeah. The Bombers had a they bang up Hill. Nick Dembski. They lost Big Hill in the second half tonight. So injuries are part of it, and injuries have to be overcome and have by every team in the league. But 
well earned. The best team on the field tonight won the game. Let's send it down to Claire Hanna with Zach Kolaris. Zach, I can tell. Hold on a second. He's clearly fired up. I can tell how fired up you are right now. What does this mid win here mean to this team? It means a lot. It means a lot, man. It means a lot to win at home in front of our fans. They were unbelievable all night long. You said how proud you are just to do this for the fans, but now you are heading to your fourth Grey Cup. What does that mean to this team? Just, uh, we got to win the last one. We got to win the last one. Montreal's a great football team. Uh, unbelievable defense. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a challenge. But uh, we'll enjoy this one tonight, man. I'm so proud of everybody. Defense is unbelievable all night. I think they only gave up three points minus the Hail Mary. Uh, special teams. Pallet with a return and uh, a block in the return. I, I just can't say, I'm just so happy right now. I'm so happy right now. I'm so happy for the guys. Brady was unbelievable all night. I was alive all night. This dude didn't practice one time. I even, he called me this morning like, I'm going, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Zach, I know you're all about talking about everybody on this team, but you're going to probably be the first quarterback to ever start in four straight Grey Cups. Thinking ahead to that game, what does that mean to you? This team's awesome. Uh, this, this, uh, this province is awesome. This city's awesome, and we're just we're fired up. We're gonna celebrate. Thank you, Zach. See you later. Bye. Hi. <laughs> I think he thought it was awesome. Hey, it's it's a long journey. It's a lot of work put in to get there and to be one game away from crowned as champion. Great Cup 110 in Hamilton. Nick Dempsey gets another week to recover. And for the second year in a row, the Lions fall one game short. Kenny Lawler is with Claire Hanna down on the field. Kenny, this game had its ebbs, it had its flows, it had its ups and downs. How would you describe this win for your team here today? A hard fought, resilient win, man. You know, we just stayed down. We always believed, man. There was no doubt in our mind, man. So, uh, man, it's just a hard fought win. Uh, the guys gave it all, and this was the result. You've won Grey Cups with this team. You stepped away for a year. What does it mean to be back and returning to the championship game? It means everything. It, it really does. And, um, when you're in a professional football world, man, this is what you want. You want to be going, playing in the brightest lights, playing uh, at the highest level, man. And uh, this is what I want. Back last year, I wasn't there. I was down bad. Now we up. And uh, it's just a, uh, just a big shout out to all my guys. You are one of Zach's favorite targets tonight. I don't know if have you ever seen him as fired up as he is right now. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen him get in that cup. You're going to see a different side. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Kenny Lawler big in the second half. Glenn, your thoughts on Winnipeg doing it again? Well, they well earned all through the regular season. 14 win football team and they were the best team tonight in the West final. We've got two veteran quarterbacks in the Grey Cup. We've got big time receivers in the Grey Cup and two outstanding defenses. Congratulations to Montreal. Congratulations to the Bombers. We'll see you in Hamilton. Congratulations to the Kolaris family as they celebrate together as daddy goes back to a fourth consecutive Grey Cup. They won two. They narrowly lost last year. The Montreal Alouettes are going to have to be ready because the Bombers are coming once again. 24-13 they win. Let's send it back to Kate in the panel. TSN for the trophy championship. Mike, congratulations to you and your team. You are the Western Division champions. I can see how excited, how electric this crowd is right now. What does this mean to you guys? Oh, we got it home. It means we got another week together. So I think the, the players really appreciate their time together. Uh, we got a lot of work to do, but we'll celebrate this one tonight. The fans are unbelievable all year long. Can't say enough. Our players love you. Thank you so much. Now, Coach, it's been over 40 years since the team has gone to four consecutive Grey Cups. You said you want another week with this team, but what's going to be important come Sunday in a week in Hamilton? 
Well, we just don't want to be there, right? I mean, they get another week, but they want to go out and perform. And the guys were, were very good tonight, but there's still a lot of stuff we can clean up, and we'll be better. And uh, the bottom line is, in a one-game situation, everybody's going to give everything they've got. And, I mean, it's a should be a good one. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Congratulations to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers who definitely earned this one. They certainly did. Congratulations to the Bombers. Their running game and defense led the way in this one tonight. And their defense, and I'm sure the Montreal defense, will be big-time storylines. Great Cup week. Veteran quarterbacks, great tailbacks, outstanding receivers. Can't wait to get to Hamilton. Zach Kolaris heads to start a fourth consecutive Grey Cup in the first half tonight. It was all Brady Oliveira. In the second half, Kenny Lawler came to play. And all along the way, the defense and the special teams and the fans here at IG Field, the difference for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as once again, they own the West setting up a huge game in the 110th Grey Cup against Montreal. 24-13, your final. That'll do it for us. Sports Center is next.